High School Football on Bear Country 95.3. Tonight, live from Franklin Tech in Turner's Falls, it's the Franklin Tech Eagles against the Crusaders of Cape Cod Tech in the state vocational tournament. Along with Sean Hubert, our studio producer tonight is Hannah Gray. I'm Jeff Terrell. So pleased you could join us tonight. I know it's an early start, but we're ready to go, Sean. The Franklin Tech Eagles looking to redeem themselves. They were bounced out of the State Division A tournament, and they were bounced decisively last Friday night. They took a long road trip to Carver, Southeastern Mass, right at the gateway of Cape Cod, and they came home on the wrong end of a 55 to nothing score, but now back in the State Vocational Tournament, and uh, they are hoping to go deep, Sean. Yeah, you know, and again, this Tech defense had only given up 82 points all season long, and you go down to Carver, and again, we just looked at that team, and, and that's just a top-notch program right now, skill at every position, second-ranked quarterback uh, in the state, and uh, they were just flying around. Tech really had no, no chance in that game, and of course, they give up 55 points. Now, that's 40% of the points that they've given up all season long. They've given up now 137, and then average jumped from 10.2 points a game to 15.2 points per game that this defense has given up. So Got a little uh, skewed there. Yeah, those numbers uh, aren't going to help the, the final totals. But the bottom line is now we find ourselves in this Tech tournament, and now Franklin Tech is the number one seed, and they have not won this since 2007, and they're in a good position to uh, be able to try to do that this season. I think they are too, and I really feel like the speed and the skill level that they dealt with Last Friday night, again, they lose. They were never really in the game. That game was decided fairly early on. But, you know, they were chasing those guys around. Now they're going to go up against an opponent who we're assuming it doesn't have nearly that same kind of talent level and that speed level. So I think that actually going up against that cover team last week should certainly help them tonight. Well, you would think that, and I, I would that would be the assumption that I would make. I did ask uh, Coach Mike Blanchard, uh, that very question as I was chatting with him a little bit before the game, and I said, you know, did the kids take anything good away from that game last week? And he kind of, nah, you know, but then he moved on to the things that they did well and, and understanding that uh, what the things they're going to try to do this week. So, yeah, you know, again, uh, they've seen it. You know, yeah, it, that, that was fast. Uh, that was fast. Those guys were good. Again, Tomasi had thrown two interceptions all season long, and, uh, or three all, all season long through three in the first half. Didn't even play in the second half last week. And, yeah, they're going to put that one behind them. This team, obviously, a, a much more competitive game for them. All right, so Cape Cod Tech, the Crusaders come in. By the way, the Eagles are playing the Crusaders for a second consecutive right, week. And, right. and we never see the Crusaders, and now back-to-back -back weeks. Right. But that aside, uh, the Cape Cod Tech Crusaders, they come in at 3-5. and five. They had a midseason four-game losing streak. They were really struggling for a long time. They did win, however, last week, Sean, but a lot of unknowns about this team. I guess we'll get our answer in a few minutes. Yeah, I mean, you look at the teams that they have played and uh, the teams that, that actually have uh, – Plus 500 records is in uh, like Bourne uh, is six and four right now, and they did lose to them 35 to eight. Uh, Old Colony, who is eight and one right now, they lost to them 46 14, and uh, Wareham is seven and three right now. They lost to them 34 to eight. So with teams over 500 records, they've not had good success. And Franklin Tech obviously comes into this one with a 6-3 and three record overall. So if you just look at the raw numbers, they've scored 120 points a game, has Cape Cod, and that's 15 points a game. And, uh, but they've given up 231, so they give up almost 30 points, give up 29 points per game. So, again, an offense that doesn't score a whole lot, a defense that does give up some points. Uh, on paper, it does look like Franklin Tech has the upper hand coming into this one. And as always, the Josiah Little watch, Bears watching, obviously. We're getting very late in the season. This is his junior year, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons as a freshman and a sophomore, and he's knocking on the door. Yeah, this is fun. And, yeah, Josiah right now, he's actually the eighth-ranked back in the state. Uh, 936 yards he has coming into this one. He averages 104 yards per game, and he's run the ball 170 times. He's scored seven touchdowns. He has put the ball on the ground nine times this year, which that number kind of surprised me because in previous seasons, uh, he had not fumbled the ball an awful lot. I got those numbers here somewhere. We'll find them later. But, uh, yeah, the bottom line is this. Uh, Josiah needs uh, those 64 yards to get to 1,000. Uh, I'm going to be thankful if he can do that tonight so we don't have to wait till Thanksgiving morning like we've had to the last two seasons. That's right. Uh, and, uh, again, uh, a milestone for him three seasons in a row. We're not sure how, the big, how big the milestone really will be or could be if he comes back his senior year and rushes for another 1,000 yards. Uh, again, we're not sure of it happening in this area where a kid has run for 1,000 yards 
in four separate seasons, and I haven't talked to anybody who knows of one. So it could be a pretty unique uh, feat that we're witnessing, and uh, he could put three-quarters of that away tonight. Cape Cod Tech is in Harwich, Massachusetts, out on Cape Cod. The drive, I am told, on, on a good day is three and a half hours. Of course, it is Friday afternoon. I'm sure they left very early, as Tech did last week when they went to Carver. That's an awfully long bus ride for those guys on the other side. They would love to come here and win a game that perhaps many people don't feel they uh, have a chance at winning. Well, I was very thankful that uh, Franklin Tech has the number one seed and is hosting this game, so we didn't have to get in the car and drive <laughs> all the way out to Cape Cod again. <laughs> so it was fine. Nice to be the home team. The last 50 miles, it was a little rough. Franklin Tech will be receiving the opening kickoff. We will take a timeout. We'll come back. We'll get you set. The opening kickoff, Franklin Tech and Cape Cod Tech. It's next. Real Country got you five points. All set for the opening kickoff here. Jean-Baptiste has it teed up on the 40-yard line for Cape Cod Tech. They're in the maroon and white. Eagles in the blue and gray. The kick will come down to Josiah Little from his 12-yard line. Right hash mark across the 20, 25, up across the 30, and then ridden out of bounds. A flag comes in behind the play shot. I was watching Josiah. Yeah. He did get a block on the edge by Ethan Smar. I think he got a face mask on the tackle as well. We'll see which way they go with that. Yeah, it is going to go against the Crusaders. So a return out to the 32 for Little, and then you tack on the 15 yards. It'll take it out to the 47-yard line. Terrific opening field position for Franklin County Tech as we get underway. 12 minute quarters here. Winner advances to the next round of this tournament. Yeah. And if it's the Eagles, I guess they'll be here. Uh, they will be the home team because they're the number one, number one seed. seed. And then, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving. And if they were to win again next week, they would have a game after Thanksgiving for a championship. Shotgun formation, two receivers to either side. Ethan Smart comes in motion from right to left. So there are three on the near side right. Handoff goes to Josiah Little, a big surge by the Crusaders defense. And they're going to bring him down for no gain as he got tripped up in the backfield. Number 52, Aiden Kieran, one of the senior captains, tripped him up. Yeah, fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage for no gain on that carry. And again, as we said, eighth in the state in rushing right now is Josiah with those 936 yards, averaging 104 yards per game. All right, we'll go shotgun formation again. Two receivers to either side. Little stands to the right of Gabe Tomasi. Candelaria in motion to the right. Back to pass, rolling to the right to Mossy. Now he'll take off himself across midfield. Little spin move, has the first down into Crusaders territory. Brings it down to around the 40-yard line of Cape Cod Tech and an eagle first down. Yeah, again, we've, we've seen Tomasi this season, and in particular on plays like that, I don't think that was a design play for him to keep and run the ball. I think he just couldn't find a receiver and found him opening up the middle. So uh, he's run for 395 yards this season himself. 53 carries, he scored eight touchdowns. So pretty good out of that quarterback position for uh, Tomasi. 10.45 to play here in the opening quarter. Eagles on the march, first and 10 from the Cape Cod Tech 39 yard line. Again, shotgun formation. And it's a quarterback draw. Tomasi right up the gut, looking for space, brings it inside the 35 yard line, down to around the 34, maybe the 33, second and short. Yeah, Franklin Tech, you can tell the coaching staff liked something about that last play. They decided to run that. That time it was an intentional quarterback keeper for Tomasi. And yeah, good gain there on first down. Looks like a bounce. So we'll call it six, I guess. I did notice not a lot of bench guys brought on the bus up from the Cape. And uh, Eagles, of course, go very deep. They have by far the biggest roster in our area. There's a huge roster that was listed on the Cape Cod Tech Athletics website, but uh, they have their, uh, their travel team, basically. Yeah. And that's who's here tonight. Second down in short, rolling to the left. Tomasi running out of time, throwing off his back heel, and he finds Smar. And that'll be good for a first down. Now, they weren't able to make a connection. Wait a minute, was that Smar? Yeah, number five, Ethan Smar. Yeah, again, that's uh, that's his number one uh, receiver there, Smar. 225 yards receiving coming into this one. 14 receptions, a pair of touchdowns. And Candelaria right behind him with 164 yards. Charles Thomas on the stop for the Crusaders. So first down and 10, second first down of the drive here. 
23-yard line out of the shotgun formation. They go to Josiah Little up the middle. It had a hole, but it closed very quickly. They did give him two down to the 20, second and eight. Yeah, and he'd actually lost a yard on that first carry. So a couple carries here early on for Josiah, just one yard, and that'll bring up a second and eight here for Franklin Tech. And he needed, Sean, 65? 64. 64. Okay, again, we're going to keep an eye on that. Second down and eight from the 20. Again, shotgun formation. Candelaria in motion to the right. Tomasi will roll towards the right. Candelaria wide open, hooks up with him at the 15, and then he spun down there. It'll be third down and about five. Well, that's, again, one of the things that with Candelaria is he's had a few drops this season. Coaching staff said he catches everything in practice and just out on the field every now and again. He just doesn't come up with the ball right there. Nice little pass, well thrown by Tomasi gathered it up, didn't try to decide what he was going to do after the catch before he made it. And it's going to bring up a third down, and we'll call it about four yards here for Tech. Ball right around the 15-yard line. Eagles moving right to left. Handoff goes to Little again. Takes it over left tackle, and, and let's see how close he got to the stick. He got the first got down. The first down. Yep. Five yards now for... Josiah, that was his third carry, and Franklin Tech moving the ball right down the field here on their first possession, aided ball. by a penalty as well. Ball is just outside the 10. We'll call it officially the 11. So first down and 10 from there. They are in the red zone. Very right impressive drive here yeah, by the, the Eagles. They are looking a lot crisper. Again, I think last here. week's game turns out it was somewhat of a benefit. Josiah they go Little, to Josiah on. Little on the right side, down bounced off a one tackle. Line. Brings it down to around the seven yard line. We'll give him four, it'll be second and six. All right, nine Morgan yards now, four himself. carries. tomasi has got a pair of carries for 19 yards here on this opening drive. He's also completed both of his pass attempts for 15 yards, one to Smar and one to Candelaria. So all the skills position uh, guys that we've talked about during the pregame are all contributing here early for this offense. Two receivers to the near side left. Now they'll go to the I formation. Tomasi under center for the first time tonight. Gives to Little left well, side, but again, it closed up line. very quickly as he get knocks, uh, gets knocked down there by 65. Charles Thomas after a short Run gain, it'll be third down. down. Yeah, yeah, give him a gain of about three. And yeah, you're right. Cape Cod's doing a nice job closing off that running lane. Three Josiah hitting the hole four. pretty good. You can see it's there for him. And then, uh, yeah, they're shutting it down after just a couple of yards. Ball at the four yard line. Third down, rolling to the right. Tomasi running out of time, and he is going to be sacked. Oh, they came sack. with the heat. They bring him all the way back to the 15-yard line. Fourth down coming up. Oh, boy, the Crusaders needed that. Yeah, he really did, and then now you got Tomasi with the big sack and losing, well, cost him about and six yards there, so nothing he could do, really. Again, he just rolled back, and then all of a sudden he had a guy come on each side, and he maybe had a split second to try to throw that thing away, but not yet, absolutely no opportunity before he gets swarmed under. This drive is six minutes long now. It began back in Eagle territory, but it is sputtering here. Fourth down and 10. The ball is at the 11, which was the original line of scrimmage on this set of downs. They're gonna put Tomasi under center, backs in the I formation. He takes a straight drop, now rolls to the right, looking downfield, directing traffic. Now he's gonna take off on the right side, heading towards the right pylon, knocked out of bounds, out of bounds. and Sean, he did not get it. No, I mean, it was a great effort by Tomas. He made a couple guys miss and tried to get to that right corner, but it looks like he's gonna be, just where they mark him, about the four yard line, it looks, yeah. Yeah, so about three yard shy. So good effort there, a good drive by Franklin Tech, but going to be a turnover on down so now we'll see this Cape Cod offense for the first time tonight and their quarterback is a senior Aiden Chokri where's the number nine and his fullback is number 22 Peyton Morris Jean Baptiste senior tailback Raker one of his top targets he's going to come to the near side right backs are in the eye formation handoff John Batiste had nowhere to go, got stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. And this is a big kid, 24. He, he's a big bruising back, but he had nowhere to go. Yeah, they don't give us the heights and weights on this roster, but he looks like a big fella, and they just blew him back two yards on that carry. Honestly, he looks more like a lineman. He really kind of did. I was watching him in, in warm-ups, and yeah, big, strong-looking kid, but Franklin Tech, just middle of the line, nothing, to, nothing doing there, loss of two. 
Second down and 12. Ball back right around the five yard line. And they're gonna go up the middle and taking off the quarterback on a keeper and he's out to midfield, accelerating along the sideline and finally tripped up at the 45 yard line. He finally, Maddox Whitman was able to track him down. 43 yards from his own goal line. And what a huge play there. 43 yards. Looked for a moment that he was off to the races, but a great closing effort there by Whitman to bring him down or else he may have gone the distance. So looked like he might have had the angle. You're right, Jeff. But yeah, Whitman was able to get over there and just knock him out of bounds. He'll call it at the 45 yard line, their own 45. Riker comes to the near side right and Caden Belair is up top on the left. Backs in the eye formation. And they're gonna to go to John Batiste again. Steps out of one tackle and gets the ball up to the midfield stripe. That'll be a gain of five. It'll be second down and five coming up. Yeah, we don't often talk about the defense, but again, this Franklin Tech defense has been pretty good this season. And you know, you got some guys in the state having a pretty good season as well. Landon Hardy is number two in the state in tackles with 92 tackles. Only behind Braden Fiala from uh, Saugus who has 93. I formation, wide outs to either side. The quarterback, Chokri under center. The Eagles nearly jumped offside, the long snap out. And they go to the fullback who has the first down and more. Number 22, Peyton Morris, the junior fullback, and he brings it down to the Tech 41 and a fresh set of downs. Yeah, first carry for Morris, nine yards and a first down. And just to finish that thought, Sean Turner, actually 54th in the state in tackles right now. He's got 46. and. Whitman, you just mentioned Wyatt Whitman's got 40 tackles. Maddox Whitman has 33. So again, pretty good defense for this Franklin Tech Eagles team. But right now, it's Cape Cod moving the ball from their own end zone and uh, right down to the Tech 41. First down in 10. Now they bunch everybody up, tight formation. And they're gonna go to, now it's a quarterback keeper, a great play fake. And Chokery now spins out of a tackle. He's inside the 30, inside the 20. And he's down to around the 19 yard line and another Crusader first down. Yeah, 22 yards and I'm not gonna lie, he fooled me on that one. I was watching the back and I'll tell you the entire interior of the line for Franklin Tech bit on that fake. What a great fake and a great run. Another 20, 65 yards for Chokery here in the opening drive for Cape Cod. Ball is down to the Eagles 15 yard line. We're Coming down to the three minute mark to play in the opening quarter. There's just been two drives. So this first quarter was really flying by at this point. Wide outs to either side. Now they're going to bring Riker into the backfield. So this is a power eye formation behind the quarterback Chokri. They are going to go to the fullback and he breaks a couple of tackles. There's a flag on the play. He brings it down to the five yard line, but let's see if this is gonna stick or not. I'm guessing that's gonna be an offside. So there'll be a little motion against it is on the Crusaders, yeah. so wipe off that nice run by Morris. He brought it from the 15 down close to the five, but instead they're gonna mark him back five. Flags flew from both sides of the field. Well, the ball down to the 20 yard line after the assessed penalty. It'll be first down and 15 from there. Clock in motion, 2.30 to play here in the first quarter. We are scoreless, Franklin Tech drove the field play fizzled, uh, the drive rather fizzled out in the Cape Cod Tech red zone and now the Crusaders on the march the other way. Power eye formation behind the quarterback Shokri and the handoff, Jean Baptiste over the right side, just a short gain and Hardy was on the stop. Again, we just talked about Landon, been a big part of this team for a few years now and having a spectacular season as a senior. And a big tackle there. Gonna bring up a second and long, you know, second and 12 here for Cape Cod. Cape Cod Tech at the 18 yard line of the Eagles. They will send receivers to either side. The tight end, Canto, will line up on the left side. Backs are split. And they'll try the left side with the fullback, Morris. He did bring the ball inside the 15. But it's going to be third down and long here. Third and about eight, Sean. Yeah, we'll get Morris again of four there. So 13 yards on two carries for him on this drive. 
We'll see if uh, the quarterback puts it up for the first time tonight. Yeah, has not attempted a pass, Shokuri. Just, uh, he's carried the ball twice for 65 yards on this drive, though. Again, receiver split to the far left. Royko to the near side right. Backs are split behind the quarterback. And he Did fakes the handoff. He takes off himself, and he's going to dance into the end zone for the touchdown. Touchdown, Crusaders, 6 nothing Cape Cod Tech. Yeah, you know, again, it, it's the same play that they've run for all of his runs, but he really does a nice job. It, is he pretending to hand the ball off? He just kind of rolls off the back of the back who he's faking to and uses him as a blocker and then just off to the races. He goes awfully quick, as we can see, 79 yards on three carries for the quarterback. And it looked like Franklin Tech was poised to score first in this game, but it's gonna be the Cape Cod Crusaders as they're up six nothing. Crusaders will go for two here. And again, they will, oh, they're gonna do, they're gonna have a, uh, their version of a Wildcat formation. And it goes over the head, goes way over the head, in fact, of Morris. And Peyton had no chance to bring that down, so the two-point conversion is unsuccessful. We'll take a timeout. 56 seconds left to play here in the opening quarter. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It's Cape Contact 6, Franklin Tech nothing. Their country, 5.3. Back here at the Tech School in Turner's Falls, a long, high, end over end kick. And that's actually, we have a whistle and a flag on the kick. Outside. It's going to go against Cape Cod. I Cape Cod. Yeah, I was about to say Tech, but we have to, we have to actually be a little more concise. Cape couple, Cod Tech. Yeah, a couple of Techs here today, yeah. Yep. So they're going to march them five yards from the 40 back to the 35 yard line. That is where Jean-Baptiste will be kicking from. And that will let the two deep men of Franklin County Tech, Max Burnett and uh, Josiah Little will come up uh, right around the 15 yard line or so. Here comes the kick, end over end. And Little catches it over to her shoulder, back to the 10 yard line, center of the field, 15, 20, 25, 30, and he's down there. It'll be first and 10 Eagles from their own 30 yard line now trailing six to nothing. So let's see what happens here, Sean. Very impressive first drive for Tech until the very end. Let's see if this time they can do the same thing but get it in the end zone this time. Yeah, and then they're gonna have to figure out how to stop that option from that quarterback right there because Aiden ran that three times and ran for 79 yards and made it look pretty easy. And they actually spotted Josiah back a yard to the 29. So first and 10 for Tech from there. Backs from the I formation. They were mostly going shotgun on the first drive. They go up the middle to the fullback to Jet Bastrash. Right up the gut. Brings it across the 30 up to around the 34. It'll be second down. Yeah, Jet's had himself a pretty good season as well. As the backup to Josiah Little, first carry of the game here. And looks like we'll give him five yards on that carry. Yep, all the way up to the 34. It'll be second down and five from there. We're down to 22 seconds left here in the first quarter. Six nothing Cape Cod Tech. It's Little again up the middle. And Josiah brings it across the 35. He needed to get to the 39, did not quite get there. It'll be third down and short, and that was the last play of the first quarter. So we we'll step aside for a timeout. End of one here at the Tech School in Turner's Falls and our score on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It is Cape Cod Tech 6, Franklin Tech nothing. Second quarter action next on Jericho Country, 95.3. Third down and about two for Franklin County Tech. As we begin the second quarter, they're at their own 37 yard line. They go up the middle to Josiah Little, right side, nothing doing. A couple of guys came blasting through for Cape Cod Tech. Number four, Morgan Dalzell. Number 22, Peyton Morris. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, they're gonna mark him down. Back him up about a yard there, so loss of a yard. Seven carries, just 14 yards for Josiah so far in this one, and Cape Cod Done a pretty good job keeping him in the backfield. It's Tomasi that's done the damage so far. A couple of completed passes and 25 yards on three carries there on that first drive. 
We'll see if Tech decides to punt here. They will. Landon Hardy will go back to punt. Now in this formation, Tech did have a fake punt last week against Carver. I think you punt this away. And they are going to punt it away. A nice high kick. And Cape Cod lets it drop, and it just kind of plops <laughs> down like a rock in the yeah, river. It really did. Yeah, it did like a rock in the river at the 39-yard line. Just kind of stopped right there. Didn't bounce either way, really. Came <laughs> just, up off the turf just a little. and Just plop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That's kind of weird. I was just waiting. I'm like, is this going to ricochet off a Cape Cod Tech player? Franklin Tech gets a, gets a gimme. And no, it just... I want to check the PSI on that football. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know if we've had All any. right, we're back to that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The way that thing hit, it just thud, and that was it. Def no bounce. Def deflate gate two. Yeah, tech tech version. <laughs> <laughs> Cape Cod Tech has it first down and 10. Ball just inside their own 40-yard line. Long snap count. Chokri, the quarterback, fakes the handoff. He takes up on the again. right side, and he's got a nice surge, brings it out across the 45 yard line up to the 47. You're right, Sean. Franklin Tech needs to figure out that particular play because it's been problematic. We'll give him a gain of six there. So 85 yards on four carries. That opening drive for them went from their four yard line. So 96 yards and only eight plays all on the ground. Yep, still have not attempted a pass. They now go to the I formation. Again, a long snap count. Handoff goes to Jean-Baptiste on the right side. He has the first down into Franklin Tech territory down to the 47. And another fresh set of downs. Fourth carry for him, and he's had less success on the ground, eight yards. And Peyton Morris is a couple of carries here for 13. And now Cape Cod has entered Franklin Tech territory down to their 46-yard line. First down and 10 from there. Riker is split off to the far side right, but the uh, other wide receiver to the near side left. Now they're going to run that quarterback option there again, but go. this time they got a nice surge, and there was nowhere for Choker to go. He's going to get dropped down for a loss. Yeah, so again, that's the first time they've really sniffed out that play. I'm sure the coaching staff had something to do with that after seeing it go up and down the field on him there in the first drive. So, yeah, loss of one. Yeah, I would say they haven't really seen a lot of that. I think one quarterback that does that a lot, well, actually, actually, Aiden Dredge of Frontier. Yeah. He'd be the other guy locally that does that. And, of course, Franklin Tech played Frontier earlier this year, early in the season, in fact. Yeah, lost that one in a... In a Tough fashion, 27-22 on 30 seconds to go in the game. And handoff goes up the middle. Jean-Baptiste. No, check that. That was actually 22. No, that's actually the fullback, Peyton Morris, on that play. And he brings the ball inside the 45 down to the 44. Third down and long. Yep, third carry for Morris. 16 yards for him. And kind of a big play right now for this Franklin Tech defense. This is, would be intriguing territory to make a decision to punt or go on fourth, depending on how many yards you give up here. And quarterback Shokri, a long snap count. Takes the handoff, he'll take off himself. Jumped over a would-be tackler, but again, Franklin Tech just clogging everything up in the middle. It'll be fourth down at about five. Yeah, give him a gain of a couple. So here's that play call that... They're at the Tech 42. You got it fourth down. You've got the lead. Do you punt this thing and try to pin Tech deep in their own end, or do you go and attempt fate? If you don't make it, you give Franklin Tech pretty good starting field position. So interesting call. Quarterback is coming back into the huddle. Zadrian Alamed just checked in defensively for the Eagles, number 25. Wideouts to either side. Gonna go. Running backs will come. Split behind the quarterback. Jokri on fourth down and five. It might be just trying to draw him. Nope. He'll take a short drop, steps up, throws downfield. It is caught. That'll be good for a first down. Throw it into double coverage, but he was able to hook up with Brandon Canto, the tight end, first and 10, Cape Cod Tech. Yeah, a little bit awkward looking pass, but he was able to jump up and find the tight end over the middle for the gain of about 10 yards and enough for the first down. So big play call there, well executed. And the drive stays alive for Cape Cod. 
A jump pass. Don't see that too often uh, in the modern game. Uh, oh, we saw one, one somewhere along the line this season. We saw one one quarterback do that. We I saw Mahomes do it in well, yeah. another season. That guy can do it. And they go up the middle for just a short gain. That's Morris. Well, if you want to go way back, and I mean way back, there was a guy in the 49ers named Frankie Alberts, quarterback, who used to do that jump pass all the time. People want to Google it at home. Maybe you'll see a highlight reel. I know there's a football card, I've seen it, where he's just jumping, the ball, <laughs> delivering yeah. the pass. That's exactly what it's it looked like. like what were they there. doing back then? Right. But, hey, it worked often enough, I guess. Second down and eight. Ball just outside the Tech, Franklin Tech 32 again. We have to be more precise. Trying to work a sweep here, and that goes nowhere. Oh, yeah, tell you, they brought Riker around on a sweep, and he ran right into Jet Bastrash, among others. Also in on the stop, number 30, Nathan Sobolewski. And then he had the three of them fall on top of him as they were driving him backwards and going to lose a yard on the carry, but a little, a little more worse for the wear after that one. Going to be third and long now again for the Crusaders. Yeah, back out to the 32, 33 yard line. Call it the, uh, yeah, 32. Third down and nine. I formation. Chalkery, the quarterback. Riker in motion to the left. Pitch, left side goes, Jean-Baptiste. Ran over one tackler and then kind of leaned forward and now the Crusaders will be faced with another fourth and five they converted on fourth and five last time yeah you've got to assume that they're going to go here again that was the first pass attempt on that fourth and five in this drive which again was completed for the first down they got to get down to the tech 24 yard line for the first down here on fourth and five We're already down to five minutes to play here in the first half this game moving by very quickly power eye formation behind shokri they're going to give it Jean-Baptiste on the right side. Steps through a few tackles. Little spin move, and he's got the first down. Boy, Sean, the Eagle defense was there. They just couldn't finish. That was all individual effort by Jean-Baptiste. Uh, yeah, again, they had him at the line of scrimmage. He was able to break a couple tackles there, and then spun back and was able to get back towards the middle of the field, breaking tackles the entire time. And just a sheer will got him the first down. Crusaders in the red zone, 19 yard line. They already lead six nothing, looking to go up by two scores here in the first half. Again, power eye formation. Jokery, the quarterback, leans in, calling the signals, takes the snap. John Get Batiste the over left tackle, leans down to around the 16, will give him three. It'll be second down coming up. Yeah, you can see the Eagles defense trying to poke that ball away from him as he was heading down to the turf. You know, it looks like I shorted him a yard. Yeah. We'll give him four. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> yard here, yard there. But yeah, it is second and six. Seventh carry for him, 22 yards on the ground for John Batiste. All right, the Crusaders break the huddle. Ball is just outside the 15 yard line. Power eye formation. Jokri the quarterback. Again, another long snap count. John Batiste goes right side. Eagles are there. He spun away from a couple of tackles, but then gets brought down. Just a short game, however. And we've got third and third and three or four here. Yeah, stiff arm got him out of the backfield. Looked like he was going to get caught in the backfield again and able to stiff arm somebody to be able to get a little bit to the outside on the right. And pick up a few more yards. Yeah, not making it easy on themselves. They've been in third and long and fourth down here a bunch of times on this drive, but the drive is alive. Yep, they've uh, converted on fourth down a couple of times tonight. Again, power eye, wide out to the near side left. Jokri, the quarterback, takes the snap. Hands off, Morris. Got it down, let's see, where did Morris get it? Got it down to the 10. And it's going to be fourth down and one. Almost looked like the right side of that offensive line for the Crusaders. Got a little bit early jump, but 
No flag on the play, and now it's going to be fourth down again. As you said, Jeff, they've converted on fourth down twice already on this drive. They need to get it just inside the 10. Right now they're just outside the 10. It's going to be a quarterback keeper, and he has it with ease. Choker, he just kind of leaned forward. He's got some big boys up front. And it'll be first down and goal inside. I'm uh, going to call it the eight-yard line. Yeah, he's not a small kid himself. And, again, we don't have heights and weights on the visiting team here today, but... You know, pretty big athletic kid, and as you said, the line up front, the big fellows up there too, so needed the yard and ended up getting a couple or three there, so they're inside the 10, down to the Tech 9, first and goal. Cape Cod Tech 6, Franklin Tech nothing. That could change momentarily, though. Power eye behind the quarterback, Chokery, first and goal from the 8. Hill takes the snap. He hands off Jean-Baptiste and gets spun down. He ran right into the heart of the Eagle defense before he got... Pasted down from there, tackle made by number 67, Colin Eddy. I'll tell you what, and what Eddie did was, once he got him wrapped up, he did not allow him to move forward another inch. He actually took him and ripped him backwards. And he's limping off the field right now. Yeah, he uh, Eddie made a good tackle on him, put him down pretty hard, stopped his momentum, and then immediately started going backwards. Yeah, he looks a little, little dinged up there after that run. So he'll come to the bench and try to uh, shake that off. He came under his own, came off under his own power. So we're making the broad assumption that we will see him again. They're going to bring uh, Matt Riker now in the backfield. And now we have a whistle and a timeout called by Cape Cod Tech. We'll take the break. 55 seconds left to play here in the first half. On the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's Cape Cod Tech 6, Franklin Tech nothing. QB and I are back after this on Bear Country 95.3. Second down and goal from the seven yard line and the handoff goes to number 22, Peyton Morris. And he brings the ball. Uh, let's see how close he got. He is inside the five, we'll call it the two. It'll be third and goal from there. Well, be a big stop here, Franklin Tech could get it. Quarterback, Shokery looks over the Eagle D. Goes into the center of the line, did not get into the end zone. He got close, maybe the two or the one. Got some whistles, timeout, kick off. And kick off tackle for another timeout. We'll take a quick 30 second break. We're back after this. Bear Country, 95.3. Quarterback Chokery has a bunch backfield behind him. Calling the signals. Takes the snap. Heads into the end zone, he is in, touchdown. Another quarterback keeper for a touchdown. It is now 12 to nothing. Yeah, I mean, that kid's been the difference in this game so far. Nine carries, 90 yards, and into the end zone again. And Cape Cod looking really good running the football. And now Franklin Tech, you're gonna start thinking about getting some points up on that board. Boy, I'll tell you what, Sean, look at all the third and fourth down conversions they have made tonight. Ton, even on that drive alone, yeah, three, three fourth down conversions there. And they have been yeah, money. Yeah, eight, eight play drive that first one for a touchdown. They will go for two here. They tried a direct snap to Morris last time and it went over his head. This time they'll go to Riker oh. up the middle, did not get there. Eagle defense holds. He did not get in. We'll take a timeout. 13 seconds left to play here in the first half. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Cape Cod Tech 12, Franklin Tech nothing. Their country got 5.3. All right, the Cape Cod Tech Crusaders, after a long bus ride, we know it was at least three and a half hours, probably a little longer than that, but once they got their legs stretched out here, Sean, they've looked pretty good. Yeah, and again, it's... <laughs> You know, Franklin Tech took that opening drive and they marched it down the field and Tomasi looked good, ran the ball a few times for a bunch of yards and that thing fizzled out and it's been all Cape Cod since then. 12 nothing Crusaders, they have the ball teed up on the 40. Burnett and Little are deep. This time they do a squib kick for the first time tonight. It is picked up by Tech at the 30 yard line, out across to the 38, that was Sean Turner. And it'll be first and 10 Eagles, but only nine seconds to play here in the half. So we'll see what they decide to do with these nine seconds. They have it uh, inside their own 40. 
Yeah, you would expect to see Tomasi probably let one fly here. Well, you know, the thought is Tomasi outside the pocket, and then he can either try to hook up with his main man, Ethan Smar, or just use his own legs and take off. They'll go shotgun formation, three receivers to the near side right. Back to pass Tomasi, rolling to the right, throws downfield. It is caught by Smar, gets out of bounds. He's up near midfield. So that's a nice start to the drive, a gain of about nine there. And we're down to four seconds left. Yeah, Smar, good catch by Smar. Turn, start looking for the sidelines and able to run it out of bounds. And we could give him, the, give him the first down, it looks like. And give him 10 and a first down. Oh, they down. did, okay. Yeah. I sh you know, I shorted, now I, I shorted a guy from Cape Contact. Now he did it to our guy. I didn't think that, that was actually there, but that's okay. Yeah. So uh, 20 yards by Smar uh, receiving on those two catches. I mean, I know my eyesight is that of an... Aging, hey, aging getting man, there. Getting but there. <laughs> getting there. But it will be a first down for Tech, but not a lot of time here in the first half. Unless there's a defensive penalty, this will be the last play of the half. Three receivers, far side right. You're going to throw to the right, incomplete, and I lied. We have time for one more play. Nine tenths of a second left. Could not make the connection there. Yeah. Try to hit Donahue over the middle there and see if he could run a little ways with it, but ball was. Pressure came, ball was underthrown slightly, and as you said, Jeff, that play happened so quickly, we will have time for one more play here. It'll be second and 10 from their own 48-yard line. Down by 12. Two touchdown runs by the Cape Cod Tech quarterback. As they have looked very impressive offensively tonight. Okay, three receivers near side right. One receiver up top on the left. Now we have a whistle. And of a timeout called by Tech. We will step aside for a quick 30-second break. We're back after this on Bear Country Body 5.3. Back in the London Honda broadcast booth, Franklin County Tech. Jeff Terrell and Sean Hubert here. Hannah Gray there, meeting Woodward Road in Greenfield. All right. Nine tenths of a second left. Shotgun formation. Gabe Tomasi looks over the Crusader D, and he's back to pass. Now, that was weird. I thought I heard a whistle. I did, too. And that kind of threw the play. I can't believe this play is going to count. He's going to throw deep. Tomasi looking down, and it's batted down. Incomplete. Now, Sean. Yeah, Josiah was in the backfield, and then it did it sound like there was I a heard, whistle. I thought I heard a whistle, and you saw some of the tech linemen get up. Tomasi was kind of, yeah, I really felt like, they should have just whistled that dead and let the Eagles have another down. But that will be the last play, I believe. We're going to hang here. Joe Gamache yeah, is Joe's going over. To, yeah, because that completely threw off. I mean, listen, they were on their own 48-yard line. It was a long shot to score on the play, but I, I think I, Sean, there was a whistle. Would they, too, too many players stopped what they were doing yeah, for no, not to have been a whistle. Yes, yeah, and you could clearly see that Josiah was going to block, and he just kind of stopped, started looking around, and Gabe as well, and, and you see the linemen, everybody reacted to that sound, which appeared to be a whistle, and uh, Joe Gamash still talking to the guys, but it looks like that is going to yep. have, well, let's see, I think Joe, it's going to yeah. be it. Joe turns on his heels, he and Bubs Blanchard, the rest of the coaching staff, they walk away. That was a very strange ending to the first half. Okay, we are at halftime here at the Tech School in Turner's Falls. Our score on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. The Cape Cod Tech Crusaders 12, the Franklin Tech Eagles nothing. The Bear Country High School Football Halftime Report is next on BearCountry.E5.3. There were times in that first half when the Eagle defense was able to make some plays defensively against these Crusaders. The one great thing, Sean, in that first half, third and fourth down conversions by the Crusaders. Franklin Tech cannot continue. They need to get that offense off the field and get their guys on the field if they want to win this. I think the best thing I've seen tonight is you just ate that whole cheeseburger during that one minute break, didn't you? Oh, no, not even oh, close. Oh, all right, Whew, I was gonna say. The kickoff is a squib kick to the 35 and jumped down there by the Crusaders. And it was, uh, Taken down by number 82, Braxton Sequaria. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Crusaders from their own 35-yard line. It's begun underway way here in the third quarter. 12-0 Cape Cod Tech. And 
Gophers. I forget to say thank you to the folks down in the concession stand. They are always kind enough to send us up some snacks at halftime, some burgers and Rice Krispie treats and stuff. And thank you guys so much for thinking about us. Well, what happened to the Rice Krispie treats? Uh, I, I don't know. Did, where'd they go? Oh, there's yours. Oh, right wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'll share mine with you. I think mine's down the other end of the booth. All right, they're going to run that uh, quarterback rollout. And oh, ball the out. ball is out. Are they going to say fumble? It, they are, and the Eagles got it. They're saying that that was a fumble. The quarterback's knee was almost down. Jokery. But the Eagles now on the first play of scrimmage here in the third quarter, they take over first and 10 from the Crusaders' 40-yard line. Well, that just couldn't be more perfect for Franklin Tech. Again, the first play of the second half, you're down by 12, and you've not really been able to stop these guys from running the football against you. He got hit, and he got kind of stood up awkwardly, and ball popped out. Franklin Tech here now at the 40-yard line. Gabe Tomasi in the I formation, Candelaria in motion from left to right. He is back to pass, steps up in the pocket, rolling to the right. Let's it fly through behind the receiver, but it was caught. And that was Ethan Smart, number five. Right, let's see where they mark. That looks like it's gonna be a gain of about eight yards. Third catch for Smart here tonight. Had he caught him in stride, he could have maybe gone a little bit further, but the Eagles will take it for now. Yeah, thrown behind him and a nice job for him to make that catch for the eight yard gain on first down. So second and two now for the Eagles. From the 32 yard line, Tomasi out of the gun. It's a quarterback draw, takes it right up the middle and keeps the legs going and depend looks like the spot has the first down, yep, they'll move the sticks. Yeah, it looked like he might have been like a bunch more than that, but kind of tried to ride his lineman there for a minute and then everything just collapsed on him. We do have well, he's okay. We had an injured player there for Cape Cod, but he's up now. One of the big linemen there. And it's going to bring up a first down here for Franklin Tech. So a perfect start to this second half, down by 12. Ball just inside the 30. First down and 10, Tomasi. Back to pass, throws on the left side, air mills it over the head of Smar down at the 25. It'll be second and 10. Yeah, four for six passing tonight is Tomasi. He missed that slant in there on the last couple plays of the game, first, first half there, trying to hit a big play and just overthrew Smar on that one. There was no way Smar was getting to that ball. So three of six pass, or four of six passing is Tomasi for 32 yards. Smar with three receptions. Shotgun formation, Tomasi with Little directly to his right. Fakes it to Josiah, he'll take off himself, but a nice surge by the Crusaders defense. And he's going to get dropped down for a loss as the pocket broke down. Number 57, Brando Sicaria with the stop. Yeah, sometimes Tomasi has some pretty good success on those types of plays, but yeah, he was just overwhelmed in the backfield. He did break a couple of tackles, but ran into one of his linemen, just nowhere to go, couldn't get around him. And it's going to bring up a third and long now for the Tech Eagles. Ball is at the 32-yard line, third down and long. Tomasi, and the, he drops the ball in the backfield, has to just drop right on it, and it's going to be fourth down and long, a bad snap. You know, snap was a little low, but I think I, I, I was looking at Tomasi as he received that snap, and I think his head was up. I think he was already looking to see downfield where he was going to throw the ball. It was a little low, but by the time he tried to corral it, he looked up, and uh, there was just no chance. He did the smart thing there and just fell down on the football, but they're going to lose a bunch of yards on that. Now it's going to be fourth and forever. Yeah, fourth and 17. Ball back at the 37-yard line. Tech will go for it, trailing 12-0 here in the third quarter. Out of the gun. Tomasi. Back to pass throws. It is caught, but well shy the first down. Ainsworth made the catch, but only a gain of seven back to the 30, and the Crusaders now will take over first and 10 from there. Yeah, again, you know, trying to get enough yards for that first down, but downfield, nobody, everybody's covered, so he took the underneath at Ainsworth, and nice catch there, but not enough for the first down. So what looked like a really good beginning to this second half for Franklin Tech. That drive fizzles out, and now you've given the ball uh, back to Cape Cod to start this drive on their own 30. All right, the Crusaders moving left to right here on the third. They still lead 12-0, 9-18 to play here in the third, so plenty of time here. 
And the first down carry goes to the right side. That is Riker, number 13. He now has become a tailback, and Jean Baptiste, he went down with that injury in the first half, and he is not back, at least not at this point. Yeah, that's only Riker's second carry. He lost the yard on the first one, and that one's going to get him just back to the line of scrimmage. So, a pair of carries for Matt, and he's minus one yard right now, and more importantly, it's going to be second and 10 for Cape Cod. From the 30, two receivers to either side. Backs are bunched behind the quarterback. Takes the snap. Handoff on the left side. They get a couple of yards there. Morris has Morris. Just a couple of yards up to the 32. It'll be third down and eight. Yep, 25 yards on the ground for Peyton Morris. That was his seventh carry of the game. John Batiste had nine carries for 26 yards before going out at the end of the first half. Not sure if we will see him back in this game now, but it looks like Riker and Morris will do the majority of the duty. Wideouts to either side, backs in the I formation. He'll free the quarterback, he'll drop back to pass. Gets it out in the left flat. That's going to go for a first down and more into Tech territory down to the 47-yard line of the Eagles. A well-delivered pass, and he knew what to do with it. Yeah, 32 yards and a first down. So Shakuri hasn't thrown the ball much tonight. That's just his second pass, but he's completed both of them for 42 yards and a big first down there. Cameron Laster on the stop, but a fresh set of downs for the Crusaders. 7.30 to play third quarter. They lead 12 to nothing. And yeah, we called Laster's name a lot here in these last few weeks. He's got a couple interceptions on the season. Quarterback, Chokri, fakes the handoff. He'll take it himself, slips out of a tackle, takes off on the right side, just bowls over Tech Tacklers, and he is close to another first down. Looks though, that he is going to be about a yard shy. Yeah, that'll put him right around 99 yards for the game. That was his 11th carry. But it will bring up a very manageable second and one here. It looks like somebody lost a piece of equipment there for Franklin Tech. He's going to chuck that over here. And yeah, it looked like they were waving the chain gang along, and then they spotted them back. But that'll be good for Tech. Yep, second and one now for Cape Cod. Ball's at the 37 yard line of the Tech Eagles. Backs in the I formation. Hand off center of the line goes to Morris and he's got a first down easily inside the 25 yard line. And this Crusader offense continues to hum right along here, Sean. Yeah, and that was just good blocking right there. Morris had a huge hole over the right side. See his quickness there and then Able to struggle through a couple of blockers and gain some extra yards at the end of that run as well. So another first down for Cape Cod, now inside the 25 yard line of Franklin Tech. First down and 10 for the Crusaders. They're going to bring. Uh, they just changed up, so now Tech is going to change out. Well, it might be too late for that. Someone's going to have to take a timeout here, yeah. It's going to be the Crusaders. They were having trouble getting their proper personnel on the field. We'll take a break. 6.03 to play here, third quarter. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Cape Cod Tech 12, Franklin Tech nothing. Back after this on BearCountry.E 5.3. First and 10 for Cape Cod Tech. Moving left to right here in the third, they lead by a score of 12 to nothing, and they have it at the Eagle 25 yard line. Handoff goes on the right side to Morris, and Peyton brings it down to around the 20, and Laster with the stop, kind of came in high. You kind of looked at that as if uh, that might have been a horse collar, but I think he had the jersey on the back of Morris, and a gain of about five there for him. So 46 yards on nine carries for Peyton Morris. Second and five from just inside the 25 yard line. Crusaders looking to go up by three scores here. And they're going to go to Riker. And Matt brings it down to around the 15. He'll be, no, they're, they're signaling, no, he's gonna be short by a, less than a yard. 
Yeah, I don't, you know, I hate to say this would be ball game if they can't keep them out of the end zone here, but you know, they're fortunate that they missed on their two point conversion. So it's only a 12 point game right now. But if Cape Cod finds the end zone here and makes it 18, it's gonna be tough for Franklin Tech. This game has moved very quickly. Only six minutes to play here in the third quarter. I formation, wide outs to either side on first, uh, third down and short. And they go up to middle, did not get there. That went to Morris. And it'll be fourth down, but you know what, Sean? They have had three fourth down conversions tonight. Yeah, and a couple of longer ones, too, there in the first half. You know, they had fourth and five, fourth and six, able to convert those. And the fourth and one, they just ran that quarterback sneak, and they gained it easily. So let's see if they go back to the sneak. I'm pretty sure they gained two or three yards last time they ran that. All right, they're going to bunch the backfield. This is usually quarterback time. He will take it himself, and oh. he has the first down. I think that's going to be close, Jeff. As a matter of fact, I can see they're, where they're marking that ball. The Crusaders thought they had it right away. You can see a motioning, but neither one of those referees coming in from no, the sides. I, yeah, it's close. You're right, Sean. It's closer than I thought. I thought I thought he had it. We might be measuring here. This is huge, actually, Jeff. It, it, it really oof. is. They can get the turnover on downs here. Keep them off the scoreboard. Again, you're already down by 12. I don't know if it, boy, this is going to be close, Jeff. As they carry the chains out, they'll get them set. And it's set right there at the 20, and then they'll stretch that chain, and he got yeah, it. Yeah, it had to be super close. Yeah, half, half the length of the football, so he did get it, but not by much. Yeah, that's a big first down right there. Again, we kind of felt like they might go to the quarterback keeper and they did. The first time they used that play, again, they had much more success. That one uh, was pretty close there, but they do get the first down. First down and 10 from the 14. I formation behind the quarterback. He's going to roll to the right. Caught in the backfield. Steps out of that tackle. Now reverses field. He's in big trouble, and he's brought down for a huge loss. Back to the 21. Well, that's just a huge defensive play there. And Chokery kind of added to his own problems. He kept trying to spin and get out of the tackles, and all of a sudden there was another eagle there waiting for him. He kept going backwards, and yeah, let's see where they end up marking him. They're gonna mark him outside the 20 to the 21. 21, it that's a loss of seven. Yeah. From the 14 to the 21, it'll be second and 17. So he had 99 yards rushing before that. He'll lose seven to 92, and more importantly for Franklin Tech, it makes it a very long second down here. Crusaders break the huddle. Backs are in the I formation. Wide outs to either side. Second down in 17 from the 21. Jokery, long snap count. Takes a short drop. Throws to the right. That is caught. And spun down quickly after a very short reception. Number 15, Caden Belair, a sophomore. It'll be third down and long. Tyler Yetter there for the tackle and a nice job in the open field. Gain of five, so that'll make it third down and 12. Ball at the 16 yard line. Chokery three for three, passing 47 yards through the air. And they need to get it inside the four to continue this drive. Of course, the Crusaders would love just to get into the end zone, go up by three scores here. 12 nothing Crusaders. Chokery. Pitches that left side to Riker. Bounce to the outside, and he gets oh, pounded. A big hit. Landon Hardy, who's had <laughs> one heck of a year, Sean. Well, we said coming into this, he was second in the state in tackles, and boy, that was a noisy one right there. Blew th right through the ball carrier, and it is going to bring up a fourth down. He only gained a couple yards on that carry. We're down to 145 to play in the third. It'll be fourth down and nine from the 13. And a must stop here for the Eagles if they want to try to come back and win this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Yeah, huge play right here. And as we've been mentioning all night, Crusaders have been terrific on fourth down. I believe four for four by our count. Yeah. Jokery is back to pass, rolling to the right. Has some space, throws towards the end zone, incomplete. It was thrown high and behind the tight end, Brandon Canto, and the Eagles will take over on downs. Yeah, again, well defended there by Franklin Tech. Chokery was not going to be able to run for that as there were just too many guys between him and where he needed to get to. And so he did try to kind of squeeze it in between a couple defenders. 
his first incomplete pass of the game. He's completed three of four, but Franklin Tech now a breath of fresh air. Although they are on their own 14-yard line, that's no bargain, but at least they got the football. All right, they're going to come out with 119 to play here in the third. They trail by a score of 12 to nothing, so it is still there for them. Tomasi under center. He is back to pass, rolling out to the right. Throws downfield, and it was short. Low throw, looking to get it to Smar. It'll be second down in 10. Yeah, Smar slid down, and Tomasi again kind of threw that a little bit short. Smar really not a very good opportunity to get and catch that football. It'll bring up a second and 10. Now, right now, it feels like, Jeff, that this would be the time that you would see Josiah bust one. You know, if this is their season, if this is meant to be, Let's see Josiah Little take one to the house from down here somewhere. They have held him in check. Second down and 10 from the 14. Tomasi will hand off to Josiah Little. Turns the corner, heads up field, and he's got a first down out across the 25 yard line. Flags came in late in the backfield there. And generally speaking, Sean, fill in the blank. Yeah, that's a 20 yard gain plus, but nope, that's gonna be a loss. Coming back. Uh, unfortunate. Well, they would have had a fresh set of downs out at around the 27 yard line, but instead they're gonna be marked back five from the 14 to the nine. Yeah, so first penalty of the game against Franklin Tech. And you know, it's not even just the five yards that you get set back now, now you're inside your own 10, but that big gainer by Josiah might've been what you needed to ignite a long drive and a score. Now you just put yourself in a little more trouble. First down and 15 from the nine. Tomasi throwing from the goal line, completes a pass on the right flat, and a big gain. And it's close to a first down, maybe a little bit shy. Yeah, I'm looking to see where they're gonna mark it, but a gain of at least 12, 13 there. Big play there for Tomasi. Six of nine passing right now. It was Ainsworth, number nine. We're calling it third and three. So 12 on the reception. Ball on the 21. They're gonna go to Josiah Little right side and he has the first down. All right, so you got you know overcame that penalty, you overcame that mistake. And now you're at your own 25 yard line here. And it looks like that'll be the last play of the third quarter as uh, yeah, they're gonna let this run down. End of three here at the Tech School in Turner's Falls and our score at the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, it's Cape Cod Tech 12, Franklin Tech nothing. Fourth quarter action next on your country guiding 5.3. All right, first play of the fourth quarter, it was Mossy rolling far to his right, looking to get it downfield, and uh, could not hook up with Tucker Hicks. Pass was batted down up at around the 45. Yeah, play started left, he worked his way back to the right and couldn't find a receiver down there, just had to throw it away. Second down and 10, they go to Josiah oh. Little, and he got pounded in the backfield. Had nowhere to go. And that will go for a loss of a yard. Yeah, we'll call it one there. So nine carries, 16 yards for Little in this one. And Tell you, someone needs to make a play here, Sean. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was just thinking, you know, a few teams can hold Josiah. Ware held Josiah to nine yards earlier this season, which obviously his lowest total. Only 16 in this one so far. All right, they'll go back to the shotgun formation. Double wide outs to either side on third down and 11. Back to pass Tomasi, heavy rush. He'll take off himself, steps out of a tackle, has some room, and he keeps the legs going. He is dropped short of the first down. He did bring it across the 30-yard line. He needed to get to the 35. He's going to be a couple of yards shy. Yeah, and if the receiver downfield realized Tomasi was coming up behind him with a football, he could have thrown a block. He didn't realize Tomasi was there until he got to him. Tomasi pretty much just had to get around him to gain a couple yards at the end of that play, but it does bring up a fourth and one, and 
Jeff, you assume that Tech has got to go here, yeah, they right? they got to go. They have to feel like if they deserve to win this game, they should be able to get a yard here. It is on their own 34-yard line. It is a risk. It's a 12-point it's a, it's a game right now with virtually the entire fourth quarter here, but they have to feel like they can get the yardage. They'll come out of the shotgun. Little to the right of Tomasi. Now Tomasi will duck in under center, and he'll take it himself. Goes up the middle, and it looks like he got it. Yeah, it sure does. Again, they try to kind of fool him a little bit. It looked like he was going to start in the shotgun, and then he inched his way up, did get under center, took the snap, immediately leaned forward through the line, and yeah, going to give him again a couple there. So nice job on a have-to-have-it play right there by Gabe Tomasi in the Eagles offense. 36-yard line, first down and 10 for the Eagles. We're down to 9.42 to play in the football game. Gabe Cod Tech 12, Franklin Tech nothing. Gabe Tomasi out of the gun. Fakes the hand off to Little. He'll throw to the right. It is caught in the right flat. Up near the 45-yard line. Ethan Smar on the receiving end. It'll be second and short. Yep, fourth catch of the game for Smar. And... Again, about 10 on that. So, yeah, 38 yards. So, that connection, they've got it going tonight. Two receivers to the near side right. Two up top on the left. Shotgun formation. Tomasi will send Smart in motion to the left. So, now there's three guys out there. Tomasi will look to the left. He'll throw downfield. It is caught for a first down by Candelaria. And he is knocked down at around the 40-yard line, and he is hurt. He took a big shot in the back. Yeah, he really did. That was the second catch by Candelaria, and a nice job holding on to that thing. After about a 15-yard gain and a first down, and I think he just kind of got the wind knocked out of him. He just popped back up, and you're going to have to come off the field for at least one play. And he's actually running he's off actually the field He's actually right running, now, so, so yeah, yeah I, I think it was a case of for about 10 seconds he felt horrible and yeah. now he's okay. Yeah, second catch of the game for him, 19 yards. Can Smar, as we said, four receptions and 38 yards. Tomasi's completed eight of 12 passes, so having a pretty good night, but not on the scoreboard so far as they're still down 12 to nothing. Freshman Hunter Donahue replaces Candelaria in the Tech lineup, but the ball's on the 39-yard line of Cape Cod Tech. First and 10 Eagles. Tomasi rolls to the right. Now he'll take off on the right. Splits the seam, still going, and he's got another first down down to the 26. Yeah, heady play by Tomasi. 48 yards on the ground now on eight carries for him. And looked downfield, nothing doing. Finds himself a lane and just put his head down and ran through, as you said, a couple of tacklers and all the way down Let's see where they mark that thing at. 25-yard line, yeah. near side hash mark, first down and 10. Eagles will send three receivers to the far side left. Tomasi gives to Little up the middle. Nothing there. They collapse right on him, bring him down with no gain. They're going to mark him up just a little bit, I guess. Well, we'll at half yard, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, really, I would say really no gain. The line of scrimmage was a 25 and... The ball's just inside the 25. Yeah, moved it up just a touch. Not much. Trips left. And one receiver to the near side right. Tomasi will roll to the left, throwing against his body. The pocket collapses. He has to throw late. Good job there of getting rid of it. He would have taken about a 10-yard loss. Yeah, and you can actually see Josiah in the, in the backfield uh, patting himself. He missed a block, and that gave Tomasi very little time to make a decision. And nice job, as you said, by him just to dump that off. Near enough a receiver so he wouldn't get a flag, but nowhere near a defender. So a good incompletion there thrown by Tomasi instead of taking that sack, and it's going to bring up a third and 10 now for Franklin Tech. Got to have it. 25-yard line of the Crusaders. Eagles trail 12-zip. Out of the gun. Smar in motion to the left. Three receivers now out there. Tomasi's going to throw over the middle. What a catch by Donahue! Pulls it in, Hunter Donahue at the nine yard line. It's first and goal. It, that was amazing. It's like the ball was already behind him and he was running right to left. The ball was thrown over his back shoulder in the opposite direction. And 
I don't know how he caught that ball, Jeff, but he got up there with one hand and snagged that very awkward looking catch. Well, what a great catch and a first down. First and goal at the nine yard line. Tomasi now, shot confirmation. He'll roll to the right. Now he'll throw at the last minute into the end zone, touchdown! It's Ethan Smarr, it's 12-6. Boy, I'll tell you what, and I had to have it drive. The Eagles got it done right there. Smart with his fifth catch of the game, and the Eagles now only down by six, 12-6, with these extra points pending. What a nice drive by the Eagles. Nice throw there by Tomasi. Nice catch, the Donahue catch to set it up. Eagles, of course, will go for two. Tomasi takes a snap, rolls right, throws on the end zone, a skidding, diving catch. It's Ethan Smarr again. Timeout on the field, 7.21 to play in this one. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. Cape Cod Tech 12, Franklin Tech 8. The half of this, Country.E 5.3. Back at the Lundgren Honda broadcast booth. Sean, you know they have that beach toy where you have those Velcro balls and the Velcro oh, yeah. paddles. Yeah. The Hunter Donahue's kit, that's what that looked like. I was thinking that, you know, it's awful cold out there, but yeah, that was just a, a, a big hand catching a football coming in quick and with one hand snagging it, again, awkwardly as well. All Beautiful right. thing. Eagle set to kick it away now, and they do a squib kick. That's a loose ball on the ground. It's a free ball and a nice heady play by the Crusaders. Special teamer down there. He made a very nice play to jump on that football. Sean Gillette, I believe it was, number one. And, yeah, that was a great play for him to get to that ball and to get it cleanly because the defense was coming, the kickoff team was coming at him and if he had bobbled that even just slightly, Tech would have had a shot at that thing. Instead, they're gonna take over just outside their own 35, we'll call it the 36 yard line. Crusaders 12, Eagles eight. 7.20 to play here in the fourth quarter. Winner goes to the next round of this state vocational tournament. Loser gets ready for Turkey Day. Right side, Matt Riker, not a lot of space. He took it over right tackle and gets dropped after a gain of about two or three. Second down coming up. Yeah, Riker hasn't had a lot of success here after coming in. John Baptiste got hurt after nine carries and 26 yards. Riker's got five carries for seven. It's really been Peyton Morris, the consistent guy to the backfield. 10 carries, 46 yards for him. Of course, it's the quarterback that leads the way. 12 carries and 92 yards and a pair of scores for him. Backs are in the I formation. Wide outs to either side. Second down and long. Jacory the quarterback with a long snap count, a very long snap count. Finally takes a snap, hands off on the right side. It'll go for a short gain to number 22, Peyton Morris. Peyton Morris. Junior fullback Landon Hardy on the stop. It'll be third and about four. Yeah, we've seen third Cape Cod go to that long snap count quite a bit tonight. And to Franklin Tech's credit, they have not jumped offside. They've only committed one penalty in this entire game. That was a five yard false start penalty, which actually ended up being the beginning of their scoring drive. Yeah, this has been a very clean game. Yeah, Cape Cod with only three penalties. Third down and about four and a half to go here. To Corey, the quarterback, calling the signals. He'll take it himself, nearly caught in the backfield, takes off on the right side, and then gets pounded on the right side. He is dropped after only a gain of about two. It'll be fourth down, and it looks like it'll be a punting situation here for the Crusaders. Yeah, they have certainly slowed him down in this second half. 94 yards total on 13 carries, but the majority of those in the first half, and yeah, Josiah Little's gonna drop back to receive this punt. Now, if they punt. If they punt, fourth and two, and Joe, Franklin Tech might, yeah, they're just telling Joe to get up. They might need to take a timeout if they run to the line and snap this thing real quick. Josiah's 20 yards off the ball. The ball's on the Cape Cod Tech 40 they're running three a yard line. Yeah, they're gonna run a play here. Tech might need to take a timeout. Yeah, here comes Joe. And now Little's gonna run back up here. Are they gonna actually run a play here or just try to draw him off? Oh, he, no, fumbled, the he snap. fumbled the snap, and he's going to get dropped for a loss. And the Eagles will take over at the 42-yard line of Cape Cod Tech. Well, that just couldn't have gone any worse for Cape Cod. I mean, you thought we were gonna, they were going to punt that ball away, and now we do have an injury timeout as one of the Cape Cod players is hobbled getting up. But 
You thought they were going to punt that thing, Jeff. I really did. I thought they'd try to pin Tech deep and try to win with the defense. Defense has been pretty good all night, but... They felt like they could get the two yards. Yeah, and that makes sense, too. But as a consequence, I mean, Tech already... Uh, Franklin Tech already had the momentum swing their way, and now they really have Uncle Mo on their side. Yeah, again, that was just a huge play. And the first time we've seen a bad snap from center to the quarterback, and the worst time for it for Cape Cod. And so instead of the punt and then Franklin Tech having the ball, they've already got the ball in Cape Cod territory. That's Aiden Giacobi who's being assisted off the field, big number 75. It'll be first down and 10 from the 43-yard line of Cape Cod Tech for Franklin Tech. And now we have a timeout taken. And we will step aside for the break. 4.53 to play in the football game. And on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Cape Cod Tech 12, Franklin Tech 8, Beer Country, Dottie 5.3. First and 10, Franklin Tech from the Cape Cod Tech 43 and a flag on first down on the snap. False start against Franklin Tech. That'll mark them back five to the 48. It'll be first and 15. Well, it may not have been the worst thing that could have happened there as that snap was super high. Tomasi able to come up with it, but the whistle had blown and it'll be first and 15. Two receivers to the near side right. Backs from the I-formation. Tomasi rolling to the right. Throwing downfield, and he's got smart. He's got it for a first down and more. All the way down to the Cape Cod Tech 21-yard oh, line. Smart just settling down in an open spot, getting the ball, turning, and then he dragged about three or four kids with him for an extra five yards. That's a 32-yard completion to Smar and Franklin Tech. Down 12 nothing for the majority of this game. They just scored to make it 12-8, and now they've got the ball deep in Crusader territory. They're almost into the red zone, and they're looking to go ahead. This fourth quarter has belonged to the Eagles. Tomasi gives to Josiah Little, bounces to the outside, then got wrapped up. He did bring it inside the 20 from the 21 down to around the 18 or the 17. Yeah, we've just been waiting for Josiah to rip one here tonight, and... They've not allowed him to do that. So again, a three there for Josiah. Just 20 yards on the ground. 11 carries for him. A lot of damage through the air, though. Gabe Tomasi in under center. Backs in the eye behind him. They go back to Josiah right side. He finds a seam, and he brings the ball inside the 15, down to around the 14. It'll be third and short coming up. Yeah, there you go. Nice six yard gainer there. Nice easy third and three here now for Franklin Tech. Down by four, but with all the confidence now. We're down to three, 20 to play in regulation. Crusaders D, the guys looking at each other as they broke the huddle saying, come on, we need a stop here. We need to make a play. Back to pass to Mossy. No, it's a draw. It goes nice. up the middle. Bastrash, and he is down inside the five-yard line. It'll be first down and goal for Franklin Tech. That was just the perfect play at the perfect time. Bastrash right up the middle and almost into the end zone. Going to go up a couple yards shy, but going to bring up a first and goal now for Franklin Tech. Eagles looking to take the lead right here with uh, 2.45 to play, clock in motion. They have, they're taking their time now. Well, I was going to say, now, you may not want to score on this very first play. If uh, Cape Cod's only got one timeout remaining, I believe they've used two here already in the second half. So when you do score, you don't want to give them an awful lot of time. And, yeah, Franklin Tech, not in any hurry right now. They're yeah. still in the huddle. Down the 220. Now they break the huddle. They come to the line of scrimmage. Tomasi will be under center. Three receivers to the left side. The lone back is Bastrash. It's Tomasi up the middle, into the end zone, touchdown! Gabe Tomasi scores, and with 2.12 to play in the game, the Eagles have broken out on top. It is 14 to eight. Uh, again, the only thing the Eagles couldn't do there was just run the clock out a little bit more. They had it first and goal just outside the goal line, and Again, you're going to take every crack you can to get those points and take that lead. 14 to 12. I misspoke a second ago. 14-12. They will go for two. 
try to go up by four here. I formation. Tomasi takes it. Rolls to the right. He'll keep it himself. No, last second throw back into the end zone. It's good. The two point conversion is caught in the back of the end zone. And it is Hicks. Tucker Hicks. And we have an injured Crusader down on that play. As they attend to him, we will take a timeout. 2-12 to play in the football game. Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard. It is now Franklin Tech 16, Cape Cod Tech 12 on Bear Country by 5.3. And an onside kick, a big battle for the football. Who has it? Franklin Tech has it. And a chance to seal the deal. They have stolen this game away from the Crusaders. Well, we said on that last kick that it was Sean Gillette that made a great play to be able to come up with that ball. And again, the ball was kicked the same way, skirting across the ground and kind of bumping end over end. And that thing got knocked around quite a bit. And it's Franklin Tech. After just scoring and taking the lead, they get the kick. And now they've got the ball in Crusader territory. I believe the Crusaders only have one timeout remaining. So Tech just has to protect the ball here. They don't need to score, and they're going to win this game. 38-yard line. Backs in the offset eye. And this play is whistled dead on the snap. It was going to be a running play to the right too little. Only two penalties against Franklin Tech tonight. Both have been false start penalties on the offense. And let's see... I haven't seen a uh, call here yet. And here we are. It's going to go against the Crusaders. Okay. And five yard penalty. So that just makes life even a little bit better for Franklin Tech. It'll give them a first and five. They take it from the 39 down to the 34. So it'll be first down and five from there for franklin tech as they look to seal the deal here they can't go into victory formation just yet they go to little up the middle spins gains a, a yard or so a timeout is called by cape cod tech we will keep it here during the timeout it'll be second down one first down sean will do it because the math just doesn't add up for the Crusaders. Yeah, I, I believe that was the last time out. They had a burn two earlier in the half, so they can't stop the clock. And yeah, you're right, Jeff. They can't quite kneel it now on second and five, but a first down. And what a comeback. I know it's not over yet, but Franklin Tech really flattened the first half down by 12. Couldn't really stop Crusaders' running game very much at all. And couldn't score any points, but Second half, different tech team. They were able to really keep uh, Jacory, the quarterback, in check after not really being able to stop him consistently in the first half. And they got the offense going here in the second half and uh, fourth quarter specifically with these two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. They lead 16 to 12, exactly two minutes to play. They'll come out of the timeout right to the line of scrimmage. Second down and five from the 34 yard line. They fake it to Little. Tomasi will take it himself. Short gain on the right side. They're trying to punch it yeah, out of there. Yeah, they're trying to punch the ball out of there. Trying to get that ball loose. Gabe says, no, not gonna happen. I think he might have taken one of those in the ear hole too. That kid was pretty aggressive with the overhand rights trying to yeah, it looked like he was get to that ball. Looks like he was punching Gabe. He was pu trying to punch the ball loose. Crusaders desperately trying to get the ball back. It's a gain of two for Tomasi. That'll bring about a third and three from the 32. And the smart thing there also obviously is that he stayed in bounds. Did not use, allow them to run them run him out of bounds. They're gonna use up as much of the play clock as they possibly can here. We're down to 118, clock still going. They might just run this right down to a second on the play clock and take the timeout. Take the timeout, right? It'll be a third down play when they run it, but that's exactly what they're doing. They're going to let this thing run down as far as possible and then call a timeout. They still have all three, so. One minute left. Yeah, they're just going to wait and wait and wait. And we'll call the timeout when we have to. We'll Under see one minute. Lands. Yeah. And Joe standing right next to the. All right, 50 seconds. That's when uh, Tech called their timeout. Again, we will keep it here. 
to discuss strategy. Okay, 50 seconds left. It'll be third down. And about three. So even if somehow, someway, the Crusaders got the ball back, they would have just a few ticks left. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like yeah, they're gonna take the snap here with 50 seconds remaining. And Obviously, then they, if you get the first down, it's if they over. Get the first down, it's over. And then they could just go for it on fourth down as well and try to get it there. So really, two cracks to go a, a few yards. They'll use up the entire play clock. Even after the fourth down play, if the Crusaders stopped them, the time would stop automatically to, to, uh, on the change of possession. Yeah, but yeah, there'd be so few ticks left. Your goal would be not to give them this football back at all. And obviously by making the first down here, that would end all of that conversation. Third and three. Third down and three. Tomasi will hand it to Little and he's got the first down and that'll do it. They'll stop the clock only to set the chains and now the Eagles will, will be able to go into a victory formation and they will advance to the next round of the tournament. I'll tell you, that was dicey there, Jeff, in the first half. I mean, things just weren't looking good for Franklin Tech at all. And, you know, they had some pretty lofty goals when they came into this season. They've accomplished some already by making the state tournament for the first time in school history. And of course, just a mismatch in that one. But this one here, they were feeling pretty good about. And we will see if they finish this off, which they will in just a few seconds. They will play again next week. And again, Thanksgiving, if they win next week, they'll play Thanksgiving morning and they'll have a championship game the week after Thanksgiving. All right, Tomasi takes the snap, takes the knee, and that will do it. The Franklin Tech Eagles have come from behind and they knock off the Cape Cod Tech Crusaders. Our final score on the Greenfield Savings Bank scoreboard, Franklin Tech 16, Cape Cod Tech 12. The post game show coming up next, we are country dot 5.3. We're back in the Lundgren Honda broadcast booth here at Franklin County Tech in Turner's Falls. Jeff Terrell, Sean Hubert, studio producer, Hannah Gray. One of our better ball games, one of our more exciting and well-played football games here, Sean, and Franklin Tech perseveres. And they scored 16 unanswered points in the second half, and they end up winning it 16 to 12. Yeah, and I'll tell you what I think I'm watching right now is, is Franklin Tech. So they've just had their celebration and a very emotional win and coming back and winning it late like that. And now they're going over to check the health of, of John Baptiste, who the running back for Cape Cod, who went out in the first half. And you saw a couple of the guys do it, and then a bunch of the guys did it. And you probably had about 20 guys run over there uh, to wish him well and hope that he's okay. So uh, what a great show of sportsmanship and awareness at, the, at a time when you've just done something spectacular, you're thinking about a guy on the other team, and that was just a great sportsmanship I just saw right there. And, uh, again, congratulations to Franklin Tech and to Cape Cod. You know, these guys came down and like, talked about a long bus ride here, going to be a long bus ride home, and uh, they've had some successes this season. The goal is to come down here and beat this Franklin Tech team, and boy, it looked good for them for about a half of football. This was a very good football game, and Franklin Tech just took it over in the second half. And, up with the win, so we've got a lot more football ahead of us, hopefully, here, Jeffrey. I was just going to say for Cape Cod Tech, uh, they have one game left. They're turkey a rivalry game against Upper Cape Cod High School. And for the Franklin Tech Eagles, well, we have another tournament game next week, Thanksgiving morning, at home against Smith, uh, against Smith Volk. And if they win next week, they'll have uh, one more game beyond that. Love it, love it, love it. And Franklin Tech, again, we thought this was going to be a special team this year. This you know, this team is, is comprised of kids that, that like to play football, that want to play football, and they work at playing football. And Tomasi being a senior, coming in as a sophomore, as a starter, and for Josiah Little, and, and, and you're surrounded by kids that just love to play football and getting it done. Nice to see him now go to seven and three. And again, another game next week for them. Everybody else will be off, but they'll be playing a week before Thanksgiving. And one more after that if, uh, if they happen to win next week. What's really great, Sean, is when a team is having a tough time and they say, okay, if we're going to win this one, we have to figure something out. We have to play a full 48 minutes of football. I mean, you can stink it up there for a while, 
But if you can figure it out, you can make the adjustments, and then execute the new game plan. Obviously, they had a new game plan. They had a game plan coming into the game. They had a new game plan coming into the second half. And the idea is to figure it out and then execute, and that's exactly what they did. Well, and then there were two or three junctures during that game where it was the have-to-have-it moment. You know, the, the stop that you have to have. They were down by 12. They had to get that stop. They didn't want to go down by 18, 19, 20 points. So, had to have it, got it. Now you're down by 12. You need to drive. You need to score. They had to have it. They got it. They need one more drive at the end. They got that one, too. So, again, how's your season going to go? It all right. It depends on you. And uh, for tonight, it's Franklin Tech's uh, world as they move on and, and continue with the goal of this Tech tournament. Uh, championship. They have not won that just since 2007. And I feel good, especially for a couple of guys for Franklin Tech who, you know, they wanted to do something special on that artificial turf down at Carver last week. I'm talking about Gabe Tomasi and Ethan Smar. It just did not happen. That game, uh, you know, that train left the rails pretty quickly uh, for Franklin Tech. But man, did those guys have that combo going for them. Yeah, you know, so Smar, you know, he came into this game with 14 receptions and he had seven receptions in this game tonight. Wow. So, yeah, he got uh, one-third of his season's receptions in this game. Uh, ended up, let's see where he ended up, uh, yards wide. 74 yards for Smart Candelaria. Had a couple catches for 19, and Ainsworth had a couple catches for 14. But, yeah, look at Tomasi's number. Uh, 12 to 17, 126 yards, very efficient. Uh, and, again, these guys came up with the play when they needed to have the play. And, uh, congratulations to them and Cape Cod again. Uh, good season for you guys and yeah, the long trip, long trip home, and now you start thinking about uh, your Thanksgiving rivalry. Final score for the final time here from the Tech School in Turner's Falls, the Franklin Tech Eagle 16, and the Cape Cod Tech Crusaders throw for John Hubert and for Hammond. I'm Jeff Turo. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Have a great weekend.